In the last lecture, we completed conjugate symmetric signals and the condition for conjugate symmetry is x t equal to x asterisk minus t where x asterisk minus t is the complex conjugate of the signal x minus t. In this lecture, we will study conjugate antisymmetric signals and the condition for conjugate antisymmetry is x t equal to minus x asterisk minus t. This is the condition for conjugate antisymmetry and by using this condition we will find out even and odd components of signal xt. Let's say signal xt is equal to at plus j bt where at is the real part of signal xt and j bt is the imaginary part of signal xt. We will first find out x minus t this means we will perform the time reversal so we have a minus t plus j b minus t after this we will find out we will find out complex conjugate of signal x minus t this will give us a minus t minus j b minus t and the final thing is amplitude scaling or you can say amplitude reversal because we are having minus x asterisk minus t this will give us minus a minus t plus j b minus t and from this condition the real part of signal x t is same as the real part of signal minus x asterisk minus t so we have we have a t equal to minus a minus t this is the real part of signal x t and minus a minus t is the real part of signal minus x asterisk minus t in the same way the imaginary part is also same b t is equal to b minus t and by using the properties of even and odd signals you can see a t is odd whereas b t is even so the real part of signal x t the real part of signal x t is odd whereas the imaginary part of signal x t is even this is very important point and we will use this to find whether the signal is antisymmetric or not let's move to the first problem in this problem signal x t is equal to 2 sin t 2 sin t plus j t raised to power 5 the real part is 2 sin t and the imaginary part is j t raised to power 5. 2 sin t is odd and j t raised to power 5 is also odd. So signal x t is neither conjugate symmetric nor conjugate antisymmetric. Let's move to the second problem. Signal x t is equal to sin cube t sin cube t plus j t raised to power 2 sin cube t is odd signal multiplied with odd signal multiplied with odd signal when we multiply two odd signals the result is even so we have even signal multiplied with odd signal so overall we are going to get odd signal so sin cube t is odd signal j t raised to power 2 is even so real part is odd real part is odd and the imaginary part is even and this is the condition of conjugate antisymmetric signals so signal x t is conjugate antisymmetric so these are the two problems now we will move to one very important point any signal can be represented as sum of conjugate symmetric and conjugate antisymmetric signals this means signal x t can be represented as sum of conjugate symmetric signal and conjugate antisymmetric signal and by using the properties of conjugate symmetric and conjugate antisymmetric signals we can easily find out conjugate symmetric part and conjugate antisymmetric part I will directly write them down conjugate symmetric part is equal to signal x t plus x asterisk minus t divided by 2 and conjugate 
anti-symmetric part is equal to signal xt minus x asterisk minus t divided by 2 if you remember the even and odd signals we obtain the even component and the odd component you have to use the same approach to find out the conjugate symmetric part and the conjugate anti-symmetric part so this is all for this lecture see you in the next one